Welcome to another presentation of Believe It or Not series. I am Werteleki, the editor. My associate editors are listed here and the technical editors follow. This is an English presentation, but there also is one in Ukrainian. For Ukrainian viewers, who are not sufficiently uh, knowledgeable of English medical terminology, they can view both presentations. We consider that proficiency in English medical terminology and literature is essential, and therefore we urge Ukrainian viewers to see this one first and then view the presentation in Ukraine second. As usual, the introduction of each of these eye-openers, believe it or not, presentations are somewhat unique and therefore require some housekeeping observations. This is an example of good clinical practice and that's why we hope that you can convince your doctor to learn how to fish. Perhaps this may help the doctor catch a difficult diagnosis much faster. There is a lot written in uh, these slides that you could stop the motion and read them at leisure. There is no correlation between what will be said verbally and from what is written in these slides. So again, if you have any questions about the written part, stop the motion and read it then. Don't wait. The fishing technique in clinical terms is the application of DNA specific binding probes and I want to stress specific. The acronym FISH then stands for fluorescent in situ DNA probes that hybridize with specific DNA sequences including chromosomes. The main point, therefore, again, is specific. Should you use the wrong probe, you're going to get negative results and assume that the patient has uh, no problems, which is the wrong interpretation. This illustration here is obviously showing three bright dots. Each of these dots represents a chromosome with identical DNA-specific sequences. You can then surmise that there are three chromosomes, and if you know human genetics, you know that human cells normally have two chromosomes. They are disomic, or disomy is a normal human characteristic, and in this case, this cell is trisomic. And trisomic for what? for a particular chromosome and if you want to know which one you will have to know what the probe binds to or you carry out a karyotype and you will recognize whether it's a big chromosome little one or whatever the problem is that in this case as you read in the story here the technician did that and found no abnormality but the clinician again was a savvy one. He was clever and he knew that the system and the signs and the signals were so strong that he persisted in his conviction that this patient had a trisomy of this sort. So he searched that through fish in cells different from those that the culture of lymphocytes produce standard karyotype. So again, this is one principle illustrated here. The other one is, since this patient's cells were normal, 
by standard carrier types and the cells tested by fish were discrepant some were trisomic some were not so this is an instance of a mosaicism so what is the process it is a multi-step logic essential for good clinical skills First, you need to define the hook, which is the optimal hook to catch the fish or the diagnosis. And that requires a thorough clinical complete examination. This cannot be overemphasized. Then know your semiology, that is the study of the significance of clinical science. This needs to be updated and unfortunately, there are very few printed resources or even in the internet. That largely uh, reflects clinical experience and few sources and so you need to uh, know them. <clears throat> then select the most typical signs, that is what are the most likely to be stigmatic or characteristic of a particular situation, that is signals of an etiology or pathogenesis or an overall diagnosis. The next step is for you to formulate a, hypo a hypothetical cause or mechanisms, that is etiology and pathogenesis, to be tested. Or if you can, then hypothesize a full diagnosis which requires the synthesis of multiple factors. The study of the pertinent nosology is essential, that is, the study of a disorder you are hypothesizing as likely. Nosology cannot contradict your evidence, that is your synthesis. Between the two, nosology wins invariably. For example, if the nosology says that this particular trisomy is associated with stupidity, and the nosology says that all patients were presidents of the United States. I think it is more reasonable to assume that your synthesis is wrong. And then define the bait, and that is which probe are you going to hang on this hook? Which specific DNA probe? or fish probe you're going to use. If you use the wrong one, you're going to catch the wrong fish and the whole thing will mislead you. So when should you think of fishing? When you have a patient like this, and I'm going to be showing this picture over and over and over and over so that you can soak it in. This is not particularly dramatic picture is a child with a squint with maybe normal or not so normal face. If it's not normal, you can call it facies. Lips with nice vermilion and a nice upper lip filtrum. The ear is a little bit unusual because you see a prominent antihelix. The forehead is a little bit maybe prominent. And in general, it's a longish face. None of this is a stigmatic sign, and I will show you which are stigmatic to this face. So, there is no evidence of an association with a known teratogen here. Your family history, your exposure history, your environmental history, all are not suggestive of these teratogens. The same, the family history reveals no suggestion of pre-existing mutations of the DNA, for instance, neurofibromatosis. The documented syndrome due to a documented cytogenetic anomaly is also absent. You did carrier types. So you are sort of uh, at a loss so far. And you then say that, uh, let's try the fish DNA probes. But which one? Note that in this presentation, we do not take into account the application of fish to neoplastic cells or uh, tissue uh, diseases that are reflecting genomic anomalies of cell populations. 
So what are the signs that I see? What do you see? This is described amply in the website Clinical Eye Openers. Here I will be brief. I'm not going to go into details except to tell you, focus on this nose. This is not larger than usual, but this is, and this is not. So what it means is that there is an overgrowth of the cartilaginous nose without involving the nostrils. This is very unusual. And here is another cartilaginous structure <coughs> Excuse me, that may be beyond the usual. So here we are another image of the same patient. It's obvious he has a long body proportions. Some will say this is a narrow chest and abdomen comparing to his height. The prominence, the nose, the ear. And what is most provocative are these furrows, furrows or valleys between the what used to be in prenatal life the fetal pads of the volar skin of the soul. It's almost like it is swollen, or again, the hypertrophy of connective structures. Now, this is really a rare condition. So you may not find this particularly provocative, but this is. And between us, this is what tipped the clinician who stubbornly pursued his hypothesis. So to recap, not stigmatic in blue, stigmatic in red, not stigmatic in blue, stigmatic in red, and stigmatic. So putting these three together, you have a bait. And you choose, on the basis of your review of the medical literature, the appropriate fish DNA specific probe. Although you already did the chromosomal analyses that were invariably quote-unquote negative, you persevere. You want to do an additional fishing test. So now that the clinician had his hypothesis, the next step which he took was to find similar instances to reinforce or challenge his presumption. Fortunately, he submitted most of his patients that were provocative to a clinical eye opener's website. And while reviewing that, he searched for those stigmatic signs and found one patient that had these enormous articulations, the knees, that were very, very large and hypertrophic. He also found a picture of her face. And in that face, it was obvious that the nose grew almost to the reach, almost reaching the oral opening without a concurrent particular growth of the nostrils. This clinician felt that these two things were something that these patients shared. So here is in red a stigmatic sign, the nose, and a generic sign in blue, which is the eye anomaly, the squint. The blue types of anomalies are seen in many, many kinds of diagnoses, but this one is somewhat less frequent. And when you add to those the enormous knees and the fact that this boy is beginning to have the similar stigmatic sign, 
the clinician decided that his hypothesis held that it was upheld to some degree and he needed to pursue that further. To do so, he decided to review the medical literature, the what's called nosology or the report of clinical observations. And this review of the up-to-date nosology showed him that indeed there are patients that have combinations of these stigmatic signals, that is the concurrence of plantar pillows, which unfortunately in the case of the lady were not pre uh, recorded. We don't know if they failed to pay attention or just it's not included in the records. But stiff joints and large joints were obvious. The length of the body compared to the weight, the cartilages, nose, and so on were present. The, each of those patients had different generic signs, strabismus, and so on. And when he went to the literature searching for this particular diagnosis, not the signs, but the synthesis, the diagnosis, he found hundreds of cases described, and they are described as the following, and he then felt that, well, you know, the camptodactyly and stiff joints fitted quite well, and so on. So he decided then to test the hypothesis further, and picked a trisomy 8-specific probe. When he ran the test, he did indeed find trisomy 1, 2, 3 chromosomes. Had he selected a different fish probe, fish DNA probe, this would have been negative or misleading. It's important that you notice that in this presentation we do not talk about neoplastic or hematopoietic disorders. In fact, please note that trisomy 8 mosaicism is most frequently found in patients with acute myelogenous leukemia. About 20% of such patients have this. But they do not have congenital malformations. Why? Because this mosaicism appears <coughs> after the organogenesis is complete. Leukemia may start after birth. So morphogenesis is already completed, but the cell disorder begins later. So we are now ready to produce a summary. The work in the 8 plus mosaicism syndrome <coughs> is associated with the following stigmatic signals. These clinical signs concurrently suggest their non-random combination. And along with the stigmatic signals, there are other concurrent anomalies, but these are not stigmatic, they are generic because they can be seen in many different diagnoses. Please note this asterisk. This calls your attention that stigmatic is not a synonym of pathognomonic. No sign is pathognomonic that I know of. No matter how rare or stigmatic a sign may be, there usually is more than one condition where it can be observed. It is the combination of these signs that is becoming more and more typical. The pathogenesis, as I mentioned just before, is that this trisomy can arise right at fertilization by an error of cell division or much later. And if it starts after organogenesis, will not be associated with malformations because the morphogenesis is complete. If this mosaicism starts after birth, it may be manifested by a neoplasia, by cancer, by leukemia. And so we know that these patients are at risk 
of neoplasia as a component of the work in the eight plus mosaicism syndrome, as well as in the populations of leukemic patients. So please note this two asterisk that says that eight plus mosaicism is found in about 20% of patients with acute myelogenous leukemia. And that is usually an important aspect to remember, although this topic is beyond the scope of this presentation. <clears throat> you should consult standard clinical information sources to uh, obtain complete and detailed information about this condition. So next is that we have arrived at the end of this presentation. You may see interesting facts by visiting the clinical Medward Eye Openers site. This is designed to open your eyes and increase your sensitivity to markers of prenatal development. Or you can go directly to the gallery of these patients with syndrome 8 plus. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for your attention and I hope that you will visit us soon again. <laughs>